Just a real quick video to show you one of the neat little features here of the transact SQL syntax. Uh, we'll, let's talk about the output clause. So we're actually going to be able to use output with update and delete it as well. I'm going to show you here how, how the basics of it work with insert. Most of the time I'm probably going to be using this though with delete statements. Um, I don't know, maybe some inserts, but l let me just get to it. Uh, I am going to reuse the, uh, the, the tempdb table that we used in the last video. Uh, I said I wouldn't, but I am. Um, because here's what I want to show you here. Um, let's do this. Let's just come down here and focus on this. So we've got, I don't know, something like eight or nine videos, or eight or nine rows in the table, eight rows. And I'm going to add in a bunch of new rows. So we had test 10, so we'll do 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so just do this. Now, what were the identity values that were just generated? If 10 was the highest and we did not reseed, logically you would think it's 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, right? But we don't know that. Were there other users that have connected to and tried to add rows or added rows in between the last time we looked at the table? That would certainly affect it, right? Uh, has it been reseeded by an administrator since then? So we really don't know. The only safe way that we would know would be to look at the actual data again. And sure enough, you know, it's just you and me, so <laughs> there's nobody else playing with it. But I want to show you how you can do this in a single step. So this is two steps. Look at this and then run the select statement to see what the generated values were. Right, let's do this though. So we'll make it now 16, 17, and 18 because I'm tired of typing. There is an output clause that you can use with the insert statement. Output gives you access to two virtual tables. So let's write this down. So output gives us access to two virtual tables. Inserted contains the new rows, things from an insert or an update set, okay, which we'll cover in the next video. We'll talk about the update uh, statement here. Uh, and then deleted contains the old copy of the rows okay? and it's empty for an insert for example. And we're going to need to know this a little bit more when we get into chapter 8 and talk about triggers so I'm going to leave this a little bit alone right now um, but we need to take advantage of the inserted. So we say we want to output inserted dot and notice what we get here. Notice that we get the actual table structure. The IntelliSense is smart enough to figure that out. So I can say, you know what, I want to see the value of the video ID for each row. Now you can treat this just like any select statement. So you can say asterisk, which says return every column in this table. And when we do that, just to show you, there you go. You see, we can actually map those together. So the alternate syntax, if you wanted to just look at the video ID, is just to specific, uh, specifically say I want that particular one. So like we do 19, 20, 21. And so now I'm just looking at the video ID. Right? The problem is we can't actually map these up specifically uh, with these values easily. It is the ordinal position here. Uh, so this got mapped to that, that got mapped to that. But if you have a long list, it kind of makes it more difficult. That's why maybe including additional columns is helpful. We're not done with the output clause, but we're done with it enough for the insert statement. So I'm going to stop here and just say that I like this. I like to sometimes be able to see what the video ID or what the identity column was without having to write a select statement afterwards. So it's just a fun little uh, thing. Um, We'll play with this a little bit more later.